Hey, it's the Chief, Bonding with Board Games. We're gonna be talking about a victory point game called Healthy Heart Hospital. What it is, real quick, and let me give the designer's name, Scott, a designer, Scott and Anna Marie Nelson. Um, imagine a hospital that's in dire straits, has been poorly managed in the 70s, um, and you've got to come in and take it over. You're going to be running four doctors, one administrator. Um, there's a lot more doctors and administrators in the deck, so they all have like different variable skills and abilities. And then you're going to manage the hospital, hopefully without going broke. You're going to try to pick up a bunch of prestige, which is your victory condition on how well you do. Almost from, think of it as the solitaire game in that respect, and you can play the solitaire, but it handles up to five. I'm going to go in and show you some of the bits. The bits are victory point game-esque. It's not a mounted board, um, but everything else is very nice with their laser cut like uh, cardboard. So let's go in. I will show you that now, including the cocktail napkin. This is what's left of the uh, where the counters were. And what I wanted to show in particular was you can see how they can get into these real cool cuts and look how thin they can cut things here. So that you've got these and then there was a whole bunch of these that were all just these beds that just fit into there. And they're just able to do such small cuts and the star cut that they really make good use of what they got. And that's all the counters you needed right there. Let me show you, oh, the famous cocktail napkin wipes a lot. This is to get that soot off your hand if you want. I always save it. I don't know why. I dig it. All right. You are looking at my Healthy Heart Hospital. First thing, well, let me pan down and show you. These are my doctors that are going to be working for me, my administrator. These are some improvements I can make to the hospital, which include operating rooms and uh, emergency rooms, a morgue. We'll get to that in a second. Um, my waiting room. So triage is going to be these cards coming in. And this is a waiting room that's going to involve these cubes that I normally wouldn't be able to see. They'll be being pulled out blindly. We'll get to that in a second. My infirmary where some patients uh, have already been set uh, randomly into the area. Let me zoom in and I'll kind of show you some of this. All right, and I'll get into what some of this cube stuff means here, and you're going to see it here. By the way, these would all be flipped over now. They're randomly placed in, and uh, they provide little, sometimes there's bonuses, sometimes there's little negatives, but just know this is the infirmary where you're going to be moving patients to convalesce. When your patients die, bad things happen to you. Uh, there's some improvements you can make, hire new people. Uh, you're going to be dealing with money. If you go broke, you will lose. So one way to lose is to go broke. One way to lose is to run out of places to, quote, hide your bodies. So you don't want to fill this track up. You don't want your patients dying. And the way you win is with prestige. The higher your prestige, the better you've done. They actually have a little like chart in the rules that says, hey, you did this. Great. Uh, hey, you your, your man is not to kill your patients, but hey, you haven't done so good. So you're always pushing your prestige, but you don't want to go broke. I tend to go broke because I like to build all of these cool little uh, rooms. And then you can improve them and they get even better. So they, uh, th they basically allowed you to move cubes around and clear them quicker and you have better chances of curing the disease, which is very thematic and real because as your patients come out, if you have an expertise, whether with a doctor or an operating room, you know, you should be able to more efficiently uh, cure your patients that come in. Emergency rooms allow you to slide over those real critical patients, and uh, but you got to take care of them quickly, which again is extremely thematic. The game really played out thematically well. Uh, there's ways to train your doctors and improve them or your administrators. And let's get into just how a turn runs real quick. All right, so we're on our first turn. You have this deck of cards. The game will be over and you will win when this deck is exhausted. As long as you haven't lost by having too many patients die or going broke. So you want to exhaust this deck. It's shuffled up. And then it's just placed down to the side. And at the beginning of each turn, you're going to draw 
and place a card into the left triage and the right triage. Now these little waiting benches represent um, single patients and you can see there's one on each side. So you're going to have two patients in the yellow which is infectious disease patients, then you have psychological patients, internal medicine, someone with some kind of heart or cardiology pro uh, problem, and then you have trauma, burns and such. So what you do is when you get this, this is just some flavor text here, what you're really being told to do is simply draw six. Now just so you can see a difference, let me get a different card. So sometimes you're going to get, I think the hardest is seven and I believe the easiest is four if memory serves. So then you're going to grab this cup. Now you're not going to be able to see these cubes inside. It's supposed to be a blind draw. You'll have cubes that match each of these colors and there's some black ones that will actually affect you uh, when you're trying to cure diseases. In this phase if I draw back, black ones are just going to go back into the cup. So I'm going to draw, well I picked a cup I can barely fit my giant hand in. All right, so six, all right, I'll cover that in a second. Then we're gonna draw four. I'll just show you, my goodness, this cup's horrible. Usually I use this real cheap plastic cup. <laughs> I thought, I thought, let's go with something cool, like my big ceramic coffee cup, and I can barely reach in. All right, all right, let's get these blacks. Like I said, the blacks don't count in this one, so come on. Oh, I should just go switch to a different cup, all right. So these are randomly drawn in and what you simply do is you, you group them together. You got a psychological patient that's a two. So this is one patient, but the two is showing the severity of their problem. If they ever get a fifth cube, this patient dies in the waiting area. So you can leave them here and I'm gonna get into how you start moving them around and curing them, but you obviously don't want them sitting in the waiting room too long uh, because they will die on you. So this is odd, normally you don't draw two, two, and two, but you can see they're all kind of headed up to the severity level. Now over here are these four, I've got a real bad psych patient. So, and I always role play the heck out of this. So I'm always like, you know, this person is, um, maybe they're, K, they're, they're, they're just chaos, they're, they're wanting to hurt themselves, and we are probably gonna need to move this patient quickly into some treatment. Um, so here we go. So this is what I'm sitting with. And then I would go ahead and begin, let me zoom out a little bit, the phases of what my doctors and my administrator can do. Now my doctor here, they've all got kind of like cheeky little name like Dr. Burns and her blue background matches trauma. She's real good at dealing with trauma. And they each have special abilities that they can deal with. So you can see hers is, if I can get my shading out of the way, uh, she is a plus two, she'll draw two more cubes out of that little cup when she tries to heal a trauma patient. So she's gonna be pulling more cubes, and I'm gonna explain kind of where it shows you how many cubes you pull, but she'll be pulling more, and she can build and improve a trauma operating room. Now let me show you one of those right now, and I'll even show you her trauma operating room. So it's gonna match the blue color, and sure enough, it's all the way almost at the bottom. Now that's the trauma plus room. So you can see this is a trauma room. And what happens is when you get a patient in here, if they have like this, well, I don't have any blue ones, but let's say I had a blue one with one cube, I would end up putting a little marker on here that would just show, hey, they've got some symptoms of trauma, or hey, I would move this to stable, or they're failing or they're critical, and they can die in here as well. Sometimes they can get worse. But you can add these trauma rooms in and they would just come in as an expansion to your hospital and then you can actually move patients over to these uh, trauma rooms or emergency rooms or whatnot. And it's a nice place because you're really, what you're doing is getting these cubes out of the waiting room and getting them into places where you can start removing them from the board or keeping them in places where they're not going to pass away. Let me cover more of the doctors. So I've got Dr. Glass, again, the cheeky name, cosmetic. Um, she receives a personal administrative token. So there are, there are medical actions that you can take 
and they're laid out in the rules. And then there's administrative ones, which have to do with training, moving patients around as an administrative action. It can also be done as a medical action. So she's got some dual responsibilities. And her cool thing is she can build and improve a break room for $6. Normally it costs 10. So they're getting breaks. And I think that's what Burns had too. She gets to build for 10 or for six. So um, instead of the $10, it's gonna be six. And I'm telling you, money is tight, tight, tight. So you've really got to get in there and, and get some things built. Dr. Chang, by the way, the hyphen means intestine. So this is cheeky as well. He's internal medicine. He also gets the plus two and that is it. He didn't have anything else going on. So Dr. Cole is an infectious disease plus two. And I'm just gonna show you some of these others. So you got other, oh, my administrator. Let me show you this. All right. So I have an administrator, public relations. She comes with a, a, uh, a chief of staff token, which allows her to do these special deals. She can fire a doctor instead of paying for a death. That is huge. Although sometimes you don't want to lose said doctor, but sometimes no big deal. And she can assign, in her case, this little priority token that's over here. And it actually uh, adds one to your prestige value or your point value. And uh, you get to draw an extra cube. So you can say, hey, we got a VIP in here. Let's take care of them. Let's make a priority. But just to show, so you've got these different administrators. I'm not going to go through all their abilities, but they all do some different quirky things, which is always fun. And then again, you got your specialists in your different fields. So psychology. All right. And your coroner, which again, we can tell we kind of have semblances that are going on here and he can hide a body for free. Um, we have Dr. Aorta, great for any medical uh, heart problem people coming in. Research is huge in this because you can, um, you can do with research actions, you can improve things or train doctors. Um, Dr. Smile is just general practitioner. So she's gonna do some general things. Clinics are huge. It's an offsite building you can build similar to an operating room where you can put minor patients out into this clinic and they just slowly heal themselves. All right, then we get the uh, head of emergency. So he's good at dealing with emergencies and can build an emergency room cheaper. All right, so we've gone through some of the cool stuff, which are these doctors that you're gonna be using. Let's get back to the turn. So we've drawn and put our patients in. We have to start dealing with these patients. Now, I'm gonna zoom in again, because if you're trying to heal patients that are in the waiting room, you can do it. And uh, for example, Dr. Chang, whenever he's dealing with someone that has an internal medicine patient, which is any of these green guys here, he's going to draw two cubes. But you'll get bonuses, if I can get my focus on, in different areas. And right here, you're not going to get any cube bonuses for treating a patient in the waiting room. Not very efficient. He'd be able to draw two cubes and he could bring this cup in. Now, again, he wouldn't see. And if he were to come in here and draw... I should not be using this cup. He would draw two cubes out if that was his action. Oops, I drew blue. That does absolutely nothing. And so he would not, if he'd drawn a green, he could remove some of these green cubes in the waiting room. So you're gonna say it's not very efficient. You're not gonna get a lot of point value or prestige value for curing them in the waiting room or the triage room. So what are you to do? Well, you gotta move them around. Now we haven't built any buildings, although we can pretend this uh, trauma room is already in place, but I'll show you some other ones before we end here, although I won't work it into the full gameplay. But right off the bat, you can get them into the, the infirmary ward. Now your infirmary ward is populated with some patients already, and they slide up from um, when they first populate in, it's two or three because it's a random draw. And the flip side is just a one. And the flip side here is a four. And if these guys ever hit five, they pass away in the inform infirmary ward. But there's a trick. You can only move patients from the waiting room to the infirmary uh, area if there are three or greater. So this is for uh, more severe patients. So if you're going to move them in here right now, I could only move my psych patients at this point in time. And it takes an action, and I didn't load these up, but so my doctor actions, each one's gonna have two of these on them. And some of them, like uh, Dr. Glass there, my cosmetic surgeon, and my administrator, are also have administrative tokens. And when you use them, they'll flip them over. And so you can move patients with an administrative token or an emergency heal token. Let's do it with an administrative. Let's say old, old Dr. Glass uses her 
administrative token. And uh, so I thought there were three on this patient, but let's move this psych ward patient. And we're gonna put them into this ward here. You're gonna exchange your three cubes, which are gonna stay out. They don't go right back into the cup. They'll all fill into the cup after this turn, but we're just gonna grab a, uh, a little bed token and we put this patient in the infirmary room. Now, if this gets filled up, you can't put any more in here and you're gonna have to start working on curing these people. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say we, got, uh, we don't have a psych doc, but Dr. Chang realizes, hey, we got a problem here. Do I come over here and cure someone over here or go with my strength, which is clearing patients out of the um, internal medicine ward? Let's do that and let's zoom in. So you can see right off the bat, you're gonna to get to draw six cubes. In the waiting room, you drew zero. And Dr. Chang has a bonus, so he's gonna draw eight cubes. He gets to draw two more. And right here, it reminds you, patients can only be moved to the infirmary at an illness level of three or four. So there's little notes all over that help you. And these are these little things that we put down at the beginning of the game that are random. And now they're gonna kinda, of, they change the game every time that goes on. So on a cure, return two cubes to the cup. This is awesome because instead of them going into the discard at that point, you get to put them right back into the cup. Um, I shouldn't say awesome. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. If you're wanting cubes back in the cup, it's perfect because the cube drawing is, you know, hey, how many cubes have already been discarded or how many are, are in places around on the board? What are my odds of drawing them? I can't remember the actual cube count, but it's in the book. So if you see you've got a bunch of cubes out on the board or in the waiting room, you know when you're drawing to cure, there's not going to be as many in the cup. And you're sitting here saying, well, how many are in here? What are what are my odds of drawing the green? By the way, this is where if you draw one of those black cubes, the patient worsens rather than getting better. So let's say Chang is gonna come in and use his plus two bonus, and we're just gonna to try to cure this patient here. We're gonna clear them out. So he's gonna draw eight cubes, two with his bonus, and he comes in and he's hoping to get green. So again, we're gonna draw. So I reach in the cup, and I like to do a one by one reveal, actually, when I pull them out. But I sit here and say, okay, we got a gray. This gray cube's not gonna do anything for this patient. I've gotta get green. I've drawn a red. That's no good. Hey, here's a green. Sweet. So we know we're gonna cure them by one. And go, hey, awesome. Drew another green. And then the next one out is a black. And I'm like, oh no. So the black is actually gonna negate one of these green cubes. I've got to draw another green. So I'm pulling these out and I'm at my last draw, five, six, seven, and ho, oh, of course I set this up, but here I get this last cube out. So I actually drew three, but one was negated by this. I've reached the value. I get to go ahead and, hey, this patient's been cured. He's very happy. Dr. Chang is awesome. He's, the patient's going home. Now normally these, all these cubes just go to the discard. But because of this, on cure, so I've totally cured the patient, if I'd only gotten one of the cubes, he would have just upgraded to one. But I've cured him. So I get to return two cubes to the cup. I'm gonna tell you, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to try a, a little bit of cure on these fellows over here. So I want this cube back in the cup to help the odds that I'll draw it. And I also have some cardiac patients. So let me just throw these two. These two are going back into my cup. All of these, including the black, go into the discard. And I think, can't remember, I wanna say there's eight black cubes and off the top of my head, I cannot remember, but I wanna say like 10 or 12 for each color. Um, so as you're removing these black cubes, you know you got a better and better chance of also curing diseases. So that would have cost Dr. Chang one of his actions, he would, one of his medical actions. He would go from blue and just turn this over. And you just continue down this phase until your doctors have all used their actions. So they've used them up and when you have nothing else to do, you can pass. Now this is where this game works great as a solo game, let me zoom out, or it works well, they say with up to five, but I actually like it with two. My wife and I really, and I, I may have already mentioned this, but we really like playing this. I'll usually take two of the doctors and she'll take two and then she'll take the whatever administrator we draw. 
Uh, you got to watch the uh, the alpha gamer. You know, I just let her do her thing, and hey, I feel like so and so is going to cure so and so. She wants to cure such and such. Uh, she draws the card for one triage room. I draw the card for the other, and uh, it was a nice, fun, leisurely game. Now you go through, and you can do some things where you're where you're hiring new people, and they give you little special abilities that come in, reduce prestige loss. Uh, per death by one and you'll put them in these little slots up here and there's some little training you can do research and you can either buy kind of one of these or you can do more training up in this area here and these things do stuff where they'll improve your doctors if I can get this so bedside manner plus one and infirmary wards so you're going to get a plus one I would put this on a doctor and that doctor now becomes a plus one cube draw when they're working in the infirmary ward. Um, we had a, our cardiologist once, uh, Aorta. Uh, we got a, a couple plus ones for cardiology problems and then uh, Liz drew this as well and she was just a monster at clearing out anybody with any kind of cardiology problem. And then we started drawing in or building some of these different areas and we had the the uh, operating room in cardiology and she was just so good because now you're drawing eight cubes here plus she had her two bonuses now she didn't get her ward bonus there but she's pulling 10 cubes and just really really efficient in incurring these patients and it's really cool if a patient um, uh, you flip them over after your turn if you didn't work on the patient in the operating room let me get the right color if you don't work on them, so you can park kind of uh, a patient in the operating room, but if you don't work on them, they flatline out. And if you don't come back and at least try to cure them on a following turn, they drop in severity level and they'll drop until they pass away as well. So you want to always come back and at least attempt a cure because that flips this to the, you know, hey, you worked on them and you're trying to heal them. If not, curing them all the way and opening it for another patient to come in. But it's a nice little, you know, almost like a push your luck mechanism, but you, you can't just ignore your patients in cardiology because otherwise they'll slowly, or in any operating room, they'll slowly start dropping on you, which makes sense. When they flatline, everybody rushes in and boop, hey, we got the heartbeat back and we're hopefully bringing them back up. Let's go through some of these cards in here. The operating room in the different colors, they all work just like that one. The research lab, very cool. So you can see it's going to give you some money and administrative actions can be used to, to conduct basic research actions. There's all this stuff which is with training and thing that, that things that you can do with your research. And if you upgrade to the even more efficient research lab, you get to take two research actions instead of one when you do it. So that's what research does. Morgue, you can see it reduces the, when you put a person that dies, they go down to your morgue. They don't cost as much as they do in here. And you've got more room to hide the bodies. Cause again, if you fill this area and you don't have a place to hide a dead body anymore, you're going to lose. Um, sorry, that was the upgraded morgue. So you, sometimes definitely you want to do that. We've lost once that way. Here's the infectious disease. Again, this is the plus one. Uh, you have more patients that you can deal with here. Um, same deal with internal medicine. The emergency room is very cool. So you know down in here, they will pass away when they get to a five. The fifth cube causes the patient to die in the waiting room. Well, you can take them straight into the emergency room and you can hold that fifth cube. But if you don't cure this patient and they're, you're not that efficient, this patient's in serious condition. If you don't cure them by the end of this round, they die. So you have to put a lot of resources into getting the patients out of the emergency room and it's touch or go. And again, great, great thematics. I mean, it really is. Patients going to the emergency room are in a lot of trouble. And you got to spend a lot of attention on them that turn because if you don't get to them, you don't get them all the way, you know, out of there. You don't get them cured and get them out of there. Uh, they're going to pass away. See, they die during the housekeeping phase. Got to get them out of there. All right, psych ward works the same as the operating rooms. The break room is really cool. You get an extra administrative action token. And uh, Dr. Glass builds this break room. Uh, for only six bucks and administrative actions are great because they, it's one way to move your people around so and you can upgrade that here's the clinic love the clinic that's the uh, there's the upgraded clinic 
you can take patients from your waiting room that are only ones and twos and you can spend an action, administrative or medical action, and say, you know what, you're not too sick here. We're going to send you over to the clinic, which we just built, built off the side of the board. So, so you're going to send this little patient over here that's got, uh, that's got a problem with, what is green again? Ah, green is internal medicine. We're going to send them to the clinic. Now, you might want to spend several more actions and totally fill this thing up so you're getting them all into the clinic. They're off-site, they're not waiting in the waiting room, they're not gonna get worse. And in the housekeeping phase, you're actually going to get to remove one of each one of these guys. So they will cure themselves within two, within two turns. Very, very nice. Love the clinic, almost always build and get a clinic in there. Allows you to clear these patients out and they slowly start curing themselves without you doing anything. So it's very, very cool. It's just a place to park patients. So we move to the cleanup phase. In the cleanup phase, you're going to do, wow, I really destroyed the board here while I was moving stuff around. In the cleanup phase, you're going to come in and you're going to refresh everybody's tokens. You're going to, uh, it's the very last thing you're going to do, but all these are going to go back into your cup. So it refreshes into the cup. If you've got a patient, or if you've got a flat liner over here, the, the patient is going to actually go down one, or if they're, they've got the heartbeat monitor, it flips to flat line, and what that's gonna force you to do is come in there and pay some attention to that patient next time. But let's say we hadn't done anything, they're gonna slowly de deteriorate there. Um, and you go through this real quick, it's just boom, 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 and then you're on to your next turn, and you draw in another card. So I draw the six, I draw a five, now I already have patients in here, so this is where this starts to matter. So you can see if you leave these guys in here, they're gonna catch cubes. And if you get real unlucky, and I've had it happen, if you've got a patient sitting here that's, hey, he's minor, no big deal, he's got a little bit of an infectious disease, and you go and draw, you know, out of six of them, you draw three, boom, he's now crashing on you. What in the heck's going on? He's about ready to expire. You've got to get him out of there. You're gonna lose this patient right in the waiting room. So you're usually leaving, managing a few cubes here, but you definitely don't wanna leave somebody that's got a three because boy, they're just so close to passing away on your next turn when you draw your cards and put in your new cubes. And then you wash and, and rinse and repeat. You're moving them around. You're hopefully building some buildings getting serious patients over there. Don't forget, you're gonna to have to spend an action to work on a patient, hopefully improve them. And don't forget, if you draw the black cubes instead of, in this case, the blue cubes, they can even get worse in the operating room. So the black cubes are always mucking with you and they're making things worse. The only time they don't mess with you is right in here, all right? But otherwise, you're building and moving and, and training and just, it functions really, really nice, and that's a basic turn for you, and I really love how everything is so thematic and moves around. It feels like you're managing a hospital with patients that are coming and going. All right, you've seen the bits. Um, the bits in here are great. The actual tokens and stuff are lovely. Um, some are... Well, some victory point games are even more intricate. Probably the little star is the, the most intricate one here in the way they've cut the, uh, the, uh, the gravestone tombstone shape. One thing I love, though, about this is they can get their cuts so close, as I showed you on that, the template I punched out, that uh, there's not a lot of wasted space with their counters because they can get them so close because it's not a die cutter that's doing it. It's an actual laser. I'm really, really digging it. At first, I didn't like the soot. I'm talking like a couple years ago. I actually thought I had like a bad copy or something, like they'd had it in a warehouse fire. <laughs> and then they said, no, that, that's what we do. And uh, uh, so the bits are great. The board is okay. It does everything it needs to do. But when you first open up the game, it's kind of lackluster. You're like, is that a helper guide pay no no that's the board i had to tell my wife that's the board and she goes that's the board because she's used to like ticket to ride and everything else that being said she and i love this game i think it's a beautiful two-player game and it benefits from you sitting on the same side of the table um almost like time stories how they tell you to sit on the same side of the table it's real easy now 
for a two player to do that. Now it's totally solitary. It feels, well, you can totally do this solitaire and be inside your head and min max and what am I gonna do? And you know, am I building a trauma operating room or a morgue or what am I doing? But it plays so well with two. I have not tried it with three, four. I would never play this with five because hey, I got this one guy, I've got my two actions or gal. I've got two actions, maybe some administrative actions or whatever. And I think it would get boring. Um, although you can kind of say, hey, I'm going to do this. Cool, I'm doing that. Hey, I'm doing this. And I'm going to take this. I haven't taken it to my board game group yet. And we'll see if I get a crowd of five. If I get a crowd of five on there, I'll go in and make a little blurb or, or come in and do a little update on, hey, it handled five, fine. And to me, with five, I think it's going to, there's not, there won't be enough to do, but I haven't done it yet. But back to the two-player game. Fun. We went broke. I've gone broke every time I've played this with my wife, and we were kicking butt on one of them. I thought, we're going to win this easy. Boom. Things got out of hand. We spent uh, my call. I decided to do some upgrade building and upgrade research and clinics and stuff. We probably didn't need to spend that money. And then we had a, a patient in the infirmary die, which we didn't expect, and it broke us. And it was my fault. That though, again, is the fun part. There's so many things where you're juggling these patients around and as we played, they felt like patients. And for some reason, I don't know why, I love hospital simula simulations. I love them. I love I love the fact that I'm this, I'm handling these patients coming in and they, the patients are cubes, but the cubes work so well because you're, you know, when, when you're deciding who's going into triage, oh my gosh, we, you know, we drew four red cubes. We've got basically somebody, and I role play it a little bit, we've got somebody just came into the, uh, the waiting room of our hospital and they're having uh, a heart attack. And we never built an emergency room and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to die. So we've got to get them out of there right now we got to get them right into the operating room or man we should have built an emergency room but the emergency room is great for that overfill and keeping it's funny the emergency room card works just like a real emergency i as a police officer are going in on this stuff all the time the emergency room is not going to get you a lot of uh prestige or or victory points or whatever but they're going to keep your people alive your patients are going to be alive because you're going to get that early intervention in there and, and maybe save them, but it's, God, it takes a lot of resources to save them out of the emergency room. Boom, and then it gets a little funny and comical when you're, you're buying this morgue so you can hide these bodies so that you don't get sued for malpractice and stuff. And again, I would role play all of that. Hey, we need this there. Hey, uh, you know, our, sorry, We're, we got a clinic. Love the clinic. You can take the cubes, as I've shown you, ones or twosies, so they can't be in serious health problems. But hey, you know what? We built a clinic that's off-site. You guys can go there. You're going to get treated quicker, and then they get treated slowly, but they, they're a place to park these folks, and they automatically get better. And it's just a, a great way to manage that. That it's the reverse of the ER. Hey, I got a crazy patient that's dying right here, you know, or or a psychotic patient. Wow, the gray cubes. This person's, you know, going nuts. Uh, we need to get them out of the waiting room. They're they're going to hurt themselves. And it they're cubes, but it felt like that. So, uh, and I think I told someone this at BGG Con 2015. If I had to pick, with my limited knowledge, I think victory point games are on the cusp of turning into a major, major company. Um, I think their production value, they need to pick some like superstar game they have and they're, they've kind of been slowly doing this anyway and really say, you know what? This game is gonna be fantasy flight quality. I don't care if you got to kickstart it, whatever you got to do. Maybe that game does get manufactured in China, but you do your own wooden or their own laser cut bits or something. But you get a professional amount of board, a great box, get some really fine artwork. Everything they do is fine, very cost effective, but I, I think they're poised to hit that next level. Um, and if they don't, or if that's not where they want to go, because uh, they work out of a uh, memory service, they, I forget the college, but they're actually 
working out of a college, teaching game design, teaching game production, wonderful. Um, I love the fact they're, you know, when they do the slip cover, it allows them to have the same box for everything. And all they have is this paper slip cover that they had to do their art on. And uh, let's just say they have another game that doesn't sell well at all. Well, you still got your box, you got everything in here, but you can just toss your cover. But I think Healthy Heart Hospital is a fun, unique game, works great with two players. I think it would do okay with three, haven't done it three. My wife and I have just been playing the heck out of it and it works phenomenally well as a solitaire game. Uh, that's it, enough said. Chief, Bonnie with Board Games, please subscribe, like, love your comments, and give us a couple thumbs up on the main thing there. That all helps out. And pass the word, share it. See you guys, bye.